All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the week again. It is time to do yet another Green Bay Packers seven round mock draft. This will be version 7.0. We do a mock draft every single week on the Green Bay Packers. So if that does interest you, definitely go down and click subscribe. We are exactly one month away from the draft. So including this one, we have five more mock drafts to make. Now, last week, we introduced trades into the mock drafts. We held off as long as possible with no trades. But as we get within that one month mark of the draft, I think it's more realistic to start to include trades because trades are going to happen on draft night, right? The Packers are tied for first in the NFL with the most draft capital in 2024 with 11 total picks. Brian Gutekunst is going to use that as ammunition to move around the draft, whether, you know, he trades up in the first round or trades down in the first round. Last week in, in that mock draft, we traded up. Uh, this week, we may look to trade down just to kind of see the way that would go. But nonetheless, we are going to be making trades in today's mock draft, and we do use the Rich Hill trade value you chart instead of the PFF built in um, trade simulator because those trades just aren't realistic. So we use the Rich Hill chart, uh, which is which is more realistic in terms of giving a point value to any given pick. And a quick recap, the Packers needs remain the same. Uh, there's been no signings. Uh, the only person I think the Packers have lost was today, which was Josiah DeGuara. I uh, didn't expect them to bring him back anyway, so maybe they'll be looking for an H-back style tight end in this draft, like a Ben Sinnott or something of that sort. But the draft needs still remain the same for the Packers. All right, so let's get this thing started and bring up the screen. Of course, we are starting this draft at pick 25, but again, like I said, trades are available in this mock draft, so we're going to let some of these picks go, and if I feel the need to trade up for a player that's falling, we will, but let's get the picks out of the way. All right, so let's quickly go over the picks as we're on the clock now at 25. Caleb Williams at 1, Drake May at 2, Jaden Daniels at 3, Marvin Harrison at 4, Roma Dunze at 5 to the Chargers. The Giants go ahead and snag J.J. McCarthy at 6. I feel like the Giants uh, could definitely go after a quarterback here at pick 6 if McCarthy's still there, something of that sort. Um, all at seven to the Titans, Malik Neighbors at eight, uh, Dallas Turner to the Bears at nine, Fatanu to the Jets, Brock Bowers at 11 to the Vikings. I uh, don't see that happening. Uh, the one thing I wish PFF had was CPU trading, like they could trade with within each other, but I, I don't know how hard that would be to implement. Uh, but the Vikings are most definitely going to trade up and grab a quarterback. That might be a J.J. McCarthy or something of that sort. So them getting Brock Bowers here, not too realistic, but uh, Brock Bowers wasn't on our radar anyways. Terry and Arnold at 12, the first quarter cornerback off the board, Latham at 13, Fuega at 14, Fashanu at 15, Jared Verse at 16 to the Seahawks, Byron Murphy to the Jags, Quinion Mitchell all the way to 18 here. I was thinking about uh, potentially trying to trade up um, if he fell to like 19 or 20, but that didn't happen. And then Nate Wiggins off the board at 19. Um, I released a video yesterday going over the cornerbacks and if they fit the Packers threshold based on height, weight, RAS. Um, so today I'm going to keep that in mind based on cornerbacks I draft. Like Nate Wiggins likely isn't on the Packers board. Uh, I think he's like 178 pounds or something of that sort. So if you want to check that out, just click the link right above. But I'm going to keep that in mind while uh, drafting cornerbacks. But three straight cornerbacks here. Mitchell, Wiggins, Dejean at 20. Uh, Latu goes at 21. Mary Smims at 22. Tyler Gutton to the Vikings at 23. And Brian Thomas Jr. to the Cowboys at 24. So we're on the clock at 25. And there are plenty of options, right? You have Jerzon Newton. You have Jackson Powers Johnson. You have Graham Barton, Tyler Newbin, Peyton Wilson, um, Kool-Aid McKinstry, TJ Tampa, Mike Sainer still. There are a ton of options here, and normally, you know, in most mock drafts without trades, I'd, I'd either select Jackson Powers Johnson here or Graham Barton. I've kind of been leaning more towards Graham Barton due to the versatility, uh, but we've done that a lot. We've selected Graham Barton at 25. We've selected Jackson Powers Johnson at 25. We've yet to draft Jerzon Newton. And I do really like him, and he keeps falling in the first round, it looks like. Like, PFF has him as their 11th-ranked prospect, but yet he keeps falling in this simulator. Um, I don't know if the Packers will spend a first-round pick on a defensive lineman, right? They're just about to uh, potentially give Kenny Clark an extension. They have Wyatt, they have TJ Slayton, Carl Brooks, Colby Wooden, and, and I think they'll add someone in this draft, but I'm not sure about the first round. So we're going to actually look to trade down here based on all the talent on the board because, like, Kool-Aid McKinstry's sitting there. Um, he's kind of jumping right back into the first round, maybe very early second. He's someone that I think the Packers like. They went to the pro day he was at, and he had a, a wonderful pro day. Uh, but any one of these other guys, I think we could 
could still get maybe early in the second round or late in the first round. All right, so I actually am going to try to trade down, and it's going to be right into the top of the second round. Now, it would be annoying to be on draft night sitting through, you know, three hours of that just for the Packers to trade out of the first. Uh, but if the value is there, the value is there. And I'm going to try to trade with the Carolina Panthers here. Um, we're going to swap 25 and 33. We're also going to gain 65, but we're going to have to give up 126 and 219. That's about the same value on the Rich Hill chart, so we're going to go ahead and send that trade. Uh, we traded with the Carolina Panthers at 25, so now we're sitting at the very top of the second round at 33. All right, so after making that trade, we are on the clock at pick 33. And still, there are some good players on the board. Peyton Wilson is up here, Zach Frazier, Kool-Aid McKinstry, TJ Tampa, and Mike Sainer still. Now, out of those three cornerbacks, the one that makes the most sense for the Green Bay Packers is Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think I have mocked him to the Packers maybe once or twice. But since then, the Packers went to his pro day. Gutekunst was there watching McKinstry run his 40 because uh, he wasn't able to at the combine. He ran a 40 with a Jones fracture in his foot at his pro day and still ran a 4.47, kind of silencing all the worries about his speed. So he's likely even faster than that. Um, that Jones fracture it isn't too much of a worry. That'll get fixed up in surgery this offseason. It'll be fine to the start of the season. Uh, but Kool-Aid McKinstry, you know, he, he upgraded his RES. Now it was pretty low. It was in the fives. Now it's in the sevens. And, and, and normally the Packers like to draft their cornerbacks with an eight or a nine. But right, it's not all the time. And a lot of times they draft guys with over 9.0 RS as that cornerback. They were busts anyway. So there's only so much you can take into that. But what you can take out of Kool-Aid McKinstry is his tape and how well he played at Alabama, right? 6'1", 195 pounds. McKinstry plays one of the most difficult positions in the game with so much poise and production. He might not be an elite athlete, but he's one of the smartest cornerback prospects you'll find. He can play in any defensive scheme and is the type of player you draft in the first round. So if he falls here to the second round, say the Packers trade back a bit, he falls maybe a little bit because of the Jones fracture in his foot and the fact he didn't, you know, test at the combine um, out of Sainer still Tampa and McKinstry McKinstry just makes the most sense I love Mike Sainer still he doesn't fit any threshold for the Packers in terms of the cornerbacks that they like although I do really like him um, I like a more round pick like 40 41 right where the Packers are at so uh, at pick 33 after the trade down which is which is good value in my opinion we are going Kool-Aid McKinstry cornerback out of Alabama before we dive into the second round I want to let you guys know that today's video is being powered by sleeper and don't forget that I'm I'm still giving away this signed Christian Watson Packers jersey here. Thank you to Sleeper. And you only have like three more days to enter in that. I'm going to announce the winner on Monday, April 1st. So if you've yet to enter in this, definitely get in on this. It's very easy to enter. Head over to Sleeper. Use the link down in the description. Sign up and make a first time deposit using code BASS, B-A-S. And also on Sleeper, your first deposit will be matched up to $500. So making a first time deposit will not only be matched, but it will enter you in this signed Christian Watson jersey giveaway. And if you're wondering what Sleeper is, Sleeper is an app where you can choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live, or even across different sports, pick more or less than the predicted stats, and make your picks to get up to 100x payouts. Sleeper is a very easy and clean app to use. And like I said, down below using code BASS will get you a first time deposit match up to $500 and enter you in the giveaway. Again, thank you to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video. Now we're on the clock at 41 and Sainer still is still here. Man, I, I would love to do this. I would love to pair Kool-Aid McKinstry, Mike Sainer still with Jair, Carrington Valentine, Keyshawn Nixon. But that is kind of a loaded room at that point. Um, the Packers re-sign Nixon. They expect him to be their slot guy. I would love someone like Mike Sainer still to take that over. They re-signed Corey Ballantyne. They have Carrington Valentine, who they believe in. So I'm not necessarily sure the Packers would go back-to-back -back first round, second round, or second round in this regard due to the trade down first two picks at cornerback. And I know they play different positions, one outside, one being slot, uh, but I'm not exactly sure the Packers would do that as much as that would be interesting. So I think I'm actually going to trade down yet again. I'm going to trade down from 41 to 51 with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I like a lot of the players right around 50s and 60s and picking up another third round pick here will just give us more ammunition to then trade up in the, maybe the later half of the second round or into the third round or in the fourth round, right? It gives us more ammunition. I'm not stockpiling these trades to make picks at every one of them just more ammunition for some of those middle rounds so uh the packers like i said they're going to be moving around will they do two straight trade downs right they could they very well could depending on how that board falls but in terms of the rich hill chart uh this is about the same value getting 51 and 98 441 so let's go ahead and offer that trade 
So now we're on the clock at pick 51. Uh, some players available, Jonah Ellis, uh, Jonathan Brooks at running back. Then there's also someone like Kieran Amagaji here from Yale, who is very interesting. I think he'll be a guard at the NFL level. You also have Marshall Nealon at edge. You have Chris Jenkins, Jaden Hicks. Edger and Cooper. There are so many options here. So the player I'm going to go with is Kieran Amagaji from Yale. Uh, the last two seasons didn't allow a single sack. He played both of which at left tackle. He had an 89.5 PFF grade in 2023. A nice run blocking grade, a good pass blocking grade. Um, I think he, again, he transitions into a guard at the NFL level. He's 6'5", 318 pounds. The athleticism, the raw power this guy you know possesses. Yes, he's playing at F FCS school for, for Yale, but I think he will transfer into the NFL nicely, and he's worthy of a top 51 pick or, or close to a top 50 pick. I think this is good value here. Um, we didn't get a lineman in the first round. I think the Packers are going to value offensive line with a guy that 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 is versatile, right? Like Amagaji could play left tackle, right tackle, or one of the guard spots. I do believe he could play pretty much any of those spots, and I believe there's a decent drop off at tackle after this, like a very decent drop off because some of the other ones are already selected. Um, so at this pick at 50. 51, we are going Kieran Amagaji, tackle slash guard out of Yale. Now we're on the clock at pick 58. There's still a lot of good talent here, such as Jonah Ellis, Jonathan Brooks, Marshall Neeland, Chris Jenkins, and Jaden Hicks. But the player I have my eyes on the most out of all of these are Jaden Hicks. And I think he's going to start to fly up boards in the next coming days. He just had his pro day yesterday, and he ran a 449. This is at 6'3", 212 pounds. A lot of people saw him as just a box safety. Like, this guy is just going to be a box safety at the NFL level, which he had 456 snaps in the box last year. Uh, but now you kind of wonder, he could probably do it all, right? 4'4", 940 with this size, this height, this weight. It's crazy. He looks like an absolute insane athlete. Um, we see here Hicks is a well-built, strong safety who can play at all three levels of the field. He is a tone-setting tackler and has starting potential in two safety systems, especially as a strong safety slash robber over the middle. He's someone I really want to do a tape breakdown on, so let me know down in the comments if you want to see that, because I've seen just a couple clips from him, and it's it's very impressive. He had 10 covered stops, 24 run stops, allowed a 73.3 passer rating, only allowed 20 receptions on 31 targets, two touchdowns allowed, had two interceptions. You know, the Packers adding Xavier McKinney – is amazing um, but I think they still need like one more guy that can move around a lot whether they're going into a too deep look Hicks could still do that or drop down into the box on run early downs someone like Adrian Amos like kind of what Adrian Amos did and can also be that robber role type of safety and I think Jaden Hicks is the definition of that and he'll be the best prospect at being that all-around type of safety safety is is pretty weak in this draft class I mean both Tyler Noob and Cameron Kinchins have just absolute god-awful RESs where Hicks is kind of like the most athletic guy in terms of you know height weight to speed ratio and we know the Packers like that so here at pick 58 we're adding another safety into that backfield or the defensive backfield we're going Jaden Hicks safety from Washington State so we're back on the clock at the top of the third round due to all the trades we made this one is a trade with the Carolina Panthers so we're here at pick 65 um, and a player that's standing out to me at 65 is someone I've yet to mock to the Green Bay Packers and we've yet to draft a linebacker and that is Junior Colson I feel like there's a decent drop off after this after Junior Colson and I really like the thought of him in the Packers defense because he's probably one of the better all-around linebackers in this draft class a guy that you could probably play on all three downs he shows capable in the run game he shows very capable in the coverage game against tight ends against running backs we see he had an 81.7 grade last year with 68 tackles only five missed this guy does not miss tackles a 4.7 percent missed tackle rate you see that 83.4 coverage grade 80.0 run defense grade he had 14 coverage stops 22 runs stops he really good in coverage for linebackers right 25 receptions on 36 targets a 69.4 completion percentage um, only allowed one touchdown forced one completion and allowed a 90.6 pass rating which generally these are skewed for linebackers like a lot of time they allow a lot of receptions on targets due to it's like a dump off pass to a running back or a quick stick concept to a tight end that sort of thing but junior colson is one of the lower ones i've seen and we see here colson's background and journey to this point are inspiring he has a size and football iq to play in the nfl He's good, but not great athlete, which will likely make him a day two pick as a rotational 4-3 linebacker with starting potential. Now, I personally think he's a great athlete. And again, his football IQ is off the charts. And I think the Packers need a linebacker like that where you can kind of put him anywhere, right? At the will, at the Sam, at the Mike, wherever you kind of need a guy to be with Quay Walker, with Isaiah McDuffie. And they need to add linebackers in this room. And I think this is like 
perfect value right at the top of the third round. I think he's a late second round type of guy. So at pick 65, we are going Junior Colson, linebacker from Michigan. All right, so now we're on the board at pick 88. We also have pick 91 and pick 98 due to the trades we made. But after 98, our next pick is 169. So I think with one of these, I may trade down yet again. But I am going to make a pick here at pick 88. I was looking at a few guys. Bucky Irving, I know a lot of people like. I, I'm not one of them. He could be a decent back in the NFL. Just I don't know if the Packers are going to draft Bucky Irving, say, in the top three rounds. I think there's other running backs a little bit later that I could see the Packers eyeing. Uh, Kinchin's here. I, I just don't see him on the Packers' radar at all, in my in my opinion. Um, Jeremiah Trotter was someone I was looking at, but we just got Colson, and, and I would like to add multiple linebackers in this draft, but who knows if the Packers would do it twice in the top three rounds. Um, then there's a lot of linemen available. Pooney, McCormick, Van Pran, Mahogany, and Patrick Paul, and I think I'm going to go that route yet again. We already got Amageji from Yale, um, but I think he's going to be more of a left guard, right guard at the NFL level, so the Packers still kind of need to get a tackle. You know, they lost Josh Nyman, they lost David Bakhtiari, they need a depth guy. Uh, I know they have Caleb Jones and Luke Tanuta but the Packers are definitely going to add another tackle. And why not Patrick Paul from Houston? It'd be funny to have two linemen, you know, with the last name Tom and Paul. It's just, it would be funny to me, right? Not only that, I think he's a good prospect. Um, 81.0 grade last year, only allowed two sacks in the last two seasons. Great pass blocker. 91.5 is a beast of a human, right? 6'7", 315 pounds. He is a 9.75 RES. It says Paul's size alone makes him worth betting on. And his improvement in his fundamentals from 2022 to 2023 was incredible encouraging he has the frame of a starting caliber offensive tackle but does need to get quicker and more fundamentally sound particularly with his hands and feet to become a reliable long-term lineman right we all believe Rashid Walker is the future at left tackle but he just had one season under his belt what if he doesn't make any improvements or struggles or there's an injury at tackle I think the Packers definitely need to add a tackle early in this draft or two offensive linemen at that so with this pick at 88 we are going Patrick Paul tackle out of Houston then at pick 91 I'm gonna add another defensive back and it's someone that the Packers met with and he fits every single like he, he checks every single threshold for the Green Bay Packers and he's a slot cornerback it's Jerry and Jones from FSU I love him. He's one of my draft crushes in this draft, and I really want the Packers to select him here in the third round. He has a 90.1 grade last year, had three interceptions, allowed a pass rating of 25.3. Great run defense, great man coverage, press man. This guy is physical. He's six foot, 191 pounds. He has a 9.59 RAS. It says it took a while for Jones to find a home at slot cornerback, but since doing so, he has shown valuable skills that should translate to the NFL. His quickness, both physically and mentally, projects well to the slot as a rotational defensive back or a nickel starter and I think this would be great competition for Keyshawn Nixon and a potential starter at nickel at that slot cornerback spot I think the Packers need to upgrade there and I think Jerry and Jones would be an upgrade so pick 91 we are going Jerry and Jones slot cornerback out of Florida State so we are going to trade pick 98. Like I said, I'm going to try to move down to round the 120 mark with the Philadelphia Eagles picking up 120, 171 and 210 and trading 98. So we're going to go ahead and do that trade and get to our pick. So after that trade, we're here on the board at 120. And I think I'm going to do what I said at the beginning of this draft and go after someone like Ben Sinnott. The Packers just, you know, lost Josiah DeGuard today. Not that they were ever trying to bring him back. Right. Um, but I, they think they need another versatile type of tight end like that. And yeah, they they have Musgrave, they have Kraft, but those are your, your move tight end, your inline tight end. Ben Sinnott going to be your H-back tight end. And we know Matt LaFleur loves a guy that can do that, right? Jos Josiah DeGuara got snaps last year, right, when he probably shouldn't have. So Ben Sinnott here I think would just be an upgrade at that. I know DeGuara was a third rounder, and this is another fourth rounder on a guy that's, you know, essentially going to be a fullback, which a lot of people don't agree with. But I think Ben Sinnott has more versatility than that. You know, he had 669 receiving yards last year for six touchdowns. Um, an 82.0 grade, 2.02 yards per route run, great run blocking, 76.1, great receiving, 81.0. Um, just an all-around great tight end. We see Sinnott is a true jack-of-all-trades tight end who can line up in the backfield, on the line of scrimmage, and at receiver. His game lacks a true trump card, but he's the type of football player every NFL team wants in their tight end room as a versatile role player. That just sounds like a description made for Matt LaFleur. He also has a 9.72 RAS. We know the Packers love their athletes at tight end and wide receiver. So here at pick 20, we we are going Ben Sinnott, tight end out of Kansas State. So we're actually going to trade up here back into the fourth round. We have two fifth round picks uh, due to the trades we made earlier at 169 and 171, and that is the exact
exact value for pick 131. So let's get back into the fourth round. So we traded back into the fourth round here to select Christian Boyd, defensive lineman out of Northern Iowa. I think I've got him in the past two mock drafts. He's starting to become one of my favorite, like, fourth to fifth round players, kind of similar <laughs> to Carl Brooks last year. And I know I talk about Carl Brooks so much, but uh, he was a guy I liked in the fourth round, ended up falling to the sixth. The Packers got him anyways. The rest is history, right? Carl Brooks should be a force to be reckoned with on this defense for years to come I think he's gonna make a really big jump this year but adding another guy to this defensive line Christian Boyd more of that interior defensive lineman uh run stopper type of guy 6'4 317 pounds 89.0 PFF grade th this year 88.5 the year before that but also had three sacks this year great pass rusher as well 89.4 we see a 7.8 percent run stop rate a 16.4 percent pass rush win rate I think the Packers need, need to add like one more guy into the defensive line room and I think Christian Boyd would be an awesome add to those group of guys so pick 131 after the trade up we are going christian boyd defensive lineman out of northern iowa not to mention the packers also met with him so it just makes sense so we are going to make another trade up into the fifth round at 162 with the cardinals giving 202 and 210 for 162 here and that is going to be to select drake nugent out of michigan yes we already got two linemen i think the packers could go three linemen in this draft we got a tackle we got a guard and now we're going to go out and get a center he is a 78.0 pff grade this year allowed one sack he is a true center the last three years at center he had a 76.6 run block grade a 78.8 pass block grade um, and could be the future starting center for the Green Bay Packers I think this is the last year of Josh Myers um, and like I said adding Amagegi at the inside at guard adding Paul outside at either tackle spot and then Drake Nugent in the middle would just round out this offensive line group that lost three guys right they lost Josh Nyman David Bakhtiari and also John Runyon and just replace a late round Michigan guy with a late round Michigan guy here in Drake Nugent at pick 162. Here in the seventh round, we have two more picks at 245 and 255. And at this pick, we're going to go running back. We've yet to do so. And I know a lot of people won't like that. And a lot of people always say, you need to get one in the third to fourth round. Running back has tremendous value in the later rounds. Maybe not so much the seventh round, but uh, I still think you can get tremendous value later in the draft at running back. Hey, the Packers brought back AJ Dillon. He's very cheap. They have Josh Jacobs. Yes, they might draft a running back early because Jacobs being 26, like they're kind of setting themselves up in a couple of years to move on to that guy that very well could happen but the way the draft board fell uh, I didn't feel the need to grab a running back there's other positions that I liked better and I'm going to go Blake Watson I believe I've drafted him in one other mock draft due to the versatility you know 1100 yards last year on 192 attempts 14 touchdowns but he had 53 receptions last year for 483 yards 37 receptions the year before that um, a very versatile running back 5'9 195 pounds uh, so we are going Blake Watson running back from Memphis here at 245 and you know I'm doing it at 255 i'm going keaton oladapo again i'm going to keep doing it uh, so long he's here I, I see him as like a sixth round guy maybe even a fifth round guy so it, you know we also saw anthony johnson jr last year as as a fifth round guy and he fell to the seven so it can happen safety is kind of undervalued and keaton oladapo shouldn't be because he's an all-around baller 6 1 2 17 plays deep plays in the box plays in the slot you can put him anywhere and great grades last year 91.3 run defense 84.4 coverage and overall grade of 88.3 i really like him he's another one of my draft crushes so to round out this draft we are going keaton oladapo safety from oregon state all right so now let's go over picks of the green bay packers seven round mock draft version 7.0 the second version with trades and as we see we made a decent amount of trades first we traded down with the panthers right out of the first round into the start of the second and we selected Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think that's tremendous value there at 33. He kind of fell a bit and then is rising back up now because of that pro day where Gutekunst was watching him. I think they have a lot of interest in McKinstry. I think he transfers into the exact scheme they want, an outside guy that can be physical, press man, and can do it all. And that is Kool-Aid McKinstry. So I think that is a really good value there at 33. Then we go Kieran Amageji here at 51. Someone I've yet to mock to the Green Bay Packers, but I think they'll have their eyes on due to the versatility, tackle, guard, due to the size, the athleticism, and the raw power he just looks like a really good prospect at offensive lineman and i think he would transition into guard and potentially be a starting guard for the packers in the future or or even this year if he beats out someone like sean ryan then we go jaden hicks another one of my favorite draft crushes from this draft um and i think he just ran like a 44940 at that size is ridiculous a lot of people thought he's just going to be a box safety i think he can do it all and i think he will be the box safety if the packers draft him um with with mckinney of course 
back deep but if they go two deep looks hicks can still do it they can put him in the slot if they really want to i think he's a very versatile safety in a weak safety draft class then we go junior colson at 65 a linebacker i've yet to mock the green bay packers and they have a need at linebacker high football iq pretty athletic um great coverage linebacker good against the run all around just a good linebacker then we go patrick paul at pick 88 um i think he, he's going to be a pure tackle at the nfl level the packers lost bakhtiari they lost the arch nyman they need another tackle in that room and i think patrick Patrick Paul in the third round is great value. Then we go Jerry and Jones, another one of my draft crushes here at 91. Uh, this is definitely the mock draft of draft crushes because he fits every single threshold of the Packers at cornerback for, for a slot guy, just a cornerback in general. Extreme athlete, over six foot, um, physical, right? Th this guy can be a future at nickel corner, no doubt. Then we go Ben Sinnott. I did it because the Packers, you know, lost DeGuara today and I feel like they're, they're going to want to replace that and, and I feel like Matt Lafleur just needs an H-back type of tight end and Benson is the best one coming out of this class um, and I like the value there in the fourth round I know a lot of people might be going a third tight end why do you need that and it's not about third tight end although he is the third tight end but they're going to be using him in a multitude of ways where he, he could get more snaps than some of the other guys due to being like the fullback role right then we trade up and go Christian Boyd another one of my draft crushes right um, great defensive lineman all around versatile pass rush runs stopping then we trade up again and go drake nugent center from michigan uh the packers also lost interior guys such as john runyon and i know we got amageji but drake nugent can be the future at center after this year after josh myers probably leaves then we go in the seventh round blake watson a versatile running back a runner a great receiver um would have maybe like to go running back a little bit earlier here but i'm fine with blake watson here in the seventh then of course keaton oladapo I'll get him pretty much every mock draft will he fall to the seventh a lot of people will say he'll never fall to two 55 but anthony johnson jr was like a fourth fifth rounder on some people's draft boards last year and he fell all the way to the packers in the seven so it can definitely happen at that safety spot but let me know your thoughts of this mock draft down below this one actually took me a lot longer than usual i was kind of you know contemplating at certain picks contemplating at certain trades but that's a good thing i, I like to make it a little bit challenging per se as we near closer and closer to the draft it is going to get more challenging uh but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below what you think of this mock draft but i'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching and as always go pack go